the Bull Simons Award, named after the legendary Colonel Arthur Bull Simons, is presented annually by U.S. Special Operations Command as a Lifetime Achievement Award to those who embody the spirit, values, and skills of the Special Operations Warrior. Tonight, we honor Sergeant Major Tyrone Adderley, whose career with the U.S. Army Special Forces, both in uniform and out, spans more than 50 years. He served in Vietnam, where he was twice wounded and twice decorated for valor. He was one of only 56 soldiers on the Special Operations Raid on the Sante Prisoner of War Camp in North Vietnam. In retirement, he has continued to serve as a mentor and advisor to the U.S. Army John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and School, influencing generations of Special Forces soldiers, a true exemplar of the Special Operations Warrior. Democracy is not perfect, but we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in to prevent them from leaving us. A lot of things were going on in the world at that point in time. And the Berlin Wall was being Built. President Kennedy had given a speech, and so I joined the Army and um, began my uh, pursuit as a, uh, didn't know it at that time, but as a career uh, serviceman. I, I did get selected uh, to, get, to go through the uh, Green Beret training, but I was only there for like a snap uh, because of uh, other things happening in the world, and it seems like that whole busload of us got levied to the conventional side uh, and wind up in the 82nd. I didn't know that I was a mentor, uh, but my war history was large scale, especially with the 65, 66 time frame, uh, because we were like the jungle hopping screaming eagles. We were putting out everybody else's fire. And I believe I got six or seven uh, campaign stars, several presidential citations, and meritorious unit citations. So uh, that was the gauntlet for me. And so I just lend those things to the body of people who, who needed that. Tyrone was just a, a natural warrior, I think. Uh, I mean, he just came up through the ranks. Uh, when I first met him, yeah, he was an E-7, and you know now he's a command sergeant major. And uh, just an outstanding individual. Yeah, I can't say enough about him. We have an exclusive club. Our club is the reason that there is, in my view, a special operations command. And that legacy from the Sante Raid should be pounded in every single soldier of special operations in tier one. Theirs was a mission of mercy, an attempt to rescue some of their fellow Americans who... The Sante Raid was uh, a mission to rescue up to 70 POWs. 56 of us were on the mission. Well, we trained you know, over 177 rehearsals, and we didn't know where we were going. They kept it such a good secret. My buddy, longtime friend, Special Forces warrior, uh, Jake Jakovenko, uh, had came over my house during a lunchtime break and uh, we ate lunch together and he said, hey, did you go do your thing? I said, yeah, I, I did it. I was one of the first ones out there. Just egging him along. And he said, okay, me too. Colonel Simon said, there's no per diem. Then he said, and it may be slightly dangerous. And he said, I don't know when we're coming home. That's all he said to us. Nobody knew where we were going, what we are going to do, or who we were going to fight. That's how secret it was. 56 young men with wheels of steel infiltrated into North Vietnam, 23 miles from downtown Hanoi, to free our fellow Americans and bring them home. Tyrone was uh, in my element, and he was not only good to guys like me with no combat, but he helped everybody, which he does today still to young troops and to young men. Robin Sage is uh, the culmination event for the Special Forces Qualification Course, and in a nutshell, it's the students 
you know, infilling behind enemy lines. They're linking it up with indigenous forces and they're doing a series of operations. But in order to do those operations with the indigenous forces, the young captain and team sergeant have to make contact with the leadership in the country. And that's where we were seeing captains fail at that course and Tyrone fixed that. He developed this mission readiness exercise. He ran through a series of scenarios with the captains and the team sergeants and individual members of the team to teach them how did you really communicate with the foreigners. And it really did increase the, um, uh, the graduation rate at the Special Warfare Center in school, specifically for uh, Robin Sage. I PCS'd back to Fort Bragg in 2019. And from there, I, I, I was just like a little bit taken back by the fact that I'd be working hand in hand with this guy, raising the next generation of Green Berets. Or he's constantly sharpening his own edge, right? He really pushes the students uh, to fully understand the doctrine and how to apply it within a, a combat environment uh, within the 21st century. Uh, he's able to understand and, and kind of, as he calls it, uh, reach inward and find oneself. And it's kind of a process. You know, if he, if he identifies someone that's, you know, has a weakness, then he, he never gives up on them. You know, it, it just makes him drive harder. He sets them up for success. He had an opinion and he would tell you. And it was always a good one, you know, and if you didn't like it, well, you know, uh, you probably messed up. I have never ever respected a man like Tyrone. You know, <laughs> she kind of tears you up a little bit. See, I never had a brother. Like I always said, you are my brother that I never had, you know. When I look at that picture of Blue Boy, some of the things that goes through my mind if you notice that picture, there's a lot of signatures. Well, a lot of those signatures are of POWs, guys on the raid, support guys. It's a team effort. It just shows you what can happen when a, you put a team together. Every time we meet with POWs at one of our reunions, they think the world of the Sante Raiders, but we think the world of them for what they gave. And if you talk to them, they'll tell you the best thing that happened to them was the Sante Raid. It, it gave them hope where there was none. The U.S. Army Special Forces is truly a, a people business. And as a special operator, if you don't understand the human dynamics of warfare, you're probably not gonna be a Green Beret for very long. And what Sergeant Major Adderley was able to do was kind of develop that communication piece. To, to call Tyrone Adderley a national treasure would be a monumental understatement. He is the epitome of a U.S. Army Green Beret, and he's the epitome of a U.S. SOCOM Special Operator. <laughs>